Greetings, this is Dr. Dan with Optimo Optics here to introduce Unit 3, Reflection at a Plane Surface. Now this is not reflection off a Boeing 737. This is reflection off a flat surface. Now if we look at a cross section of, let's say, a wall and magnify it, we see that there are a lot of bumps on it, the little hills, little depressions. So if a light ray hits uh, one of the hills on this wall, it might be deflected pretty steeply. And if it hits a valley on the wall, it might be deflected in a shallow path. And some, some part of the wall that's in between a hill and a valley might cause the light ray to be diverted that way when it reflects off the wall. So you can see that the light rays that are reflected go in all sorts of different directions, and therefore you will not get a coherent, nice, sharp image. And that's why when you stand in front of a wall, you cannot see yourself. You cannot see your reflection. So this is called a diffuse reflection, and this occurs off a dull surface. Now let's contrast that with a reflection off a smooth surface. Now, when a light ray hits this surface and it bounces off, and another light ray hits the surface at the same angle, it bounces off at the same angle. And so here you will get a nice, sharp, distinct image because all the light rays that are reflected off the surface go in the same direction. This is called specular reflection, not spectacular, specular. Although I suppose if, uh, depending upon whoever is standing in front of the mirror, you might actually get a spectacular reflection. So this is off a smooth surface. Now let's construct a mirror and a line that's perpendicular to it. Now, this is the back of the mirror on the right side. Remember, light is traveling from left to right in our optics course, so the left side of the line has the shiny mirror. The line that's perpendicular to the mirror, we call that the normal. A normal is a line that's 90 degrees to another line. That is not to say that if a line is not 90 degrees to another line, that that is an abnormal line. Or as Igor said in the movie Young Frankenstein, an abnormal line. If you have not seen that movie, I highly recommend it. So let's construct our incoming ray and our reflected ray that make an angle theta with the normal. Math teachers and optics teachers love to use Greek letters, I think, because no one understands math and no one understands Greek either, except, of course, for the Greeks. So we define the angle of incidence as the angle between the incoming ray and the normal. It's this angle here. And we define the angle of reflection as the angle between the outgoing ray and the normal. So that's this angle here. And now the law of reflection states that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. And most importantly, all of these rays are in the same plane. When I took my first optics uh, test in optometry school, I forgot to mention that. 
and I got points taken off the test because of that. So when they're all on the same plane, it means that when a ray hits the mirror on our screen here at angle theta, it doesn't bounce off the screen and come closer to you at angle theta in a different plane. That does not happen. All rays stay on the screen in the same plane. I will draw another mirror and another normal and another incoming ray and a reflected ray. And we'll put an object there, O. And if we extend the reflected ray back, that is where the virtual image of the object is at O prime the same distance behind the mirror that the object is in front of the mirror. It's virtual because if you put a screen behind the mirror, you would not see the virtual image on that screen. The light does not actually pass behind the mirror. Now, a question that uh, I'm often asked is if a mirror flips uh, your, your face left to right and right to left, why doesn't it also flip you upside down? And the answer is rooted in the law of reflection and in the rectilinear propagation of light. So when you're standing in front of a mirror, the top of your head sends a ray of light to the mirror, let's say along the normal. So the angle of incidence is zero degrees. Therefore, the angle of reflection is zero degrees. And the top of your head's image is the same distance behind the mirror also on top. And the same happens with the bottom of your face. The ray extends to the uh, mirror, bounces back, and the bottom of your face corresponds to the bottom of the image's face. Now, why are we flipped right for left and left for right. Let's draw another mirror. This time we'll be looking at it from the, from the front. So we're going to have someone stand in front of the mirror. We'll see the back of their head. Give them some hair. Now, a light ray from the left side of their head going along the normal and a light ray from the right side of the head going along the normal will create a virtual image behind the mirror where your left side of your head will correspond to the right side of the image's head, the virtual image's head. And the, left, and the right side of your head will correspond to the left side of the virtual image's head. Just like when you stand and talk to someone if standing in front of you, that person's right side is your left and that person's left side is your right. Okay, a couple interesting things about mirrors. We'll draw a mirror and a normal. <clears throat> There's the back of the mirror again on the right side of the line, the shiny parts on the left side of the line. And this time we'll send the light ray in along the normal. Angle of incidence is zero, angle of reflection is zero, the light bounces straight back. Now, let's tilt the mirror. We'll tilt it, we'll draw a blue mirror here that's tilted at an angle theta. And we'll draw a normal. And we'll still send our incoming ray along that black normal line, the normal to the first mirror. That is the back of that mirror. So it, the angular incidence is theta and the angle of reflection of this new tilted mirror is also theta. So isn't that interesting? When you tilt a mirror at an angle, the reflected ray comes out at twice that angle. 
That's an important principle to remember. Light is reflected at twice the angle at which a mirror is tilted. Now, another interesting thing about mirrors is when you take two of them facing each other and one of their edges is touching the other one's edge like this, we'll call the first bottom mirror OA and the top mirror OB. So again, the backs of the mirrors are on the outside. The shiny parts are facing each other on the inside. And we'll say that the mirrors are separated by angle gamma. Oh no, another Greek letter. And we'll place a light source between the mirrors. We'll call that S, point S. And we'll say that that light source is reflected first at mirror OA. So that means that the image will be formed the same distance behind OA that S is in front of OA. We'll call that first image P1. Now that image P1 is now a, an object for the second mirror OB. And so P2 will be formed the same distance behind OB that P1 is in front of OB. Now P2, the second image, becomes an object for the first mirror again, mirror OA. And its image will be P3. And P3 becomes now an object for mirror OB again. And let's say P4 is formed over there. Now if we extend the lines of the two mirrors, we see that P4 is uh, formed behind both mirrors. That means that that is the last image to be formed. Now, let's say the light source is uh, reflected first at mirror OB. So it forms an image Q1, the same distance behind OB that S is in front of it. And that becomes an object for mirror OA forming image Q2. And Q2 becomes an object for image OB forming its image Q3, also behind both mirrors. So you see we have a total of seven images formed. Four that started at mirror OA and three that started at mirror OB. Now let's say the angle between the light source and OA is alpha and the angle between the light source and OB is beta. There are mathematical formulas that help us predict how many images will be formed. The number of P images is 180 degrees minus alpha over gamma. And the number of Q images is 180 minus beta degrees over gamma. You'll probably get a fraction or a decimal. You always round up to the next unit to get the number of images, and then you add up the number of P images and Q images to get the total number of images. If you happen to get a whole number and not a fraction or a decimal, it means one of the, it means the last image is formed on the surface of one of the mirrors. So if you get the number of P images is 3.2, round up to 4. If you get the number of Q images is 2 and a third, round up to 3. Always round up to the next whole number. Now I have here a pen light situated between two mirrors, and it produces 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 images. It really works in the real world, you see? Now, if you happen to be taking a photo of a flat surface, if you stand right in front of it and take a flash picture, you get a nice picture of the flash in your photo because you are 
uh, sending in the light ray at an angle of zero, an incident angle of zero, angle of reflection is zero, it's there. So what you do is you tilt yourself or tilt the camera, so now the image is reflected out in the right field and you get a much clearer picture.